welcome back to Flying with TFC. In this video, I'm not actually uh, planning to do much in the way of flying anywhere. This is in response to a suggestion that I do a tutorial or overview explaining the instrument panels that are in use in Orbiter. Um, see here, I'm on the runway at uh, Kennedy Space Center in the uh, Delta Glider and I chose to start out with this ship because it is one of the default ships that comes with Orbiter. So, hit F1 and jump inside the cockpit and you see a complicated looking instrument panel, but really it's not that complicated once you know what some of these things are. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see where to start. Okay, let's start with the HUD. That is this display up here. It is projected in front of the pilot. And to get an idea of what it would look like in uh, in an actual spacecraft or aircraft, you hit F8 one time, and you get this view. Now, this is the kind of a view that you would see in even a modern-day real aircraft that had a HUD. You would have a display like this. You'd have something like this, sort of a transparent screen in front of the pilot where you would have this information projected on it by a computer dis computer controlled display of some kind. Now, we we'll switch over F8 again, and this is another view of the HUD. This is the so-called glass cockpit, which is uh, just something that makes it easier to fly and see what's going on. So, to explain the HUD, up here at the top, You've got it it's right here. It tells you what mode it's in. It's in surface mode, and it is relative to Earth. The stripe at the top is a compass, and it shows you your heading in degrees. We're headed right now at about 331 degrees, which basically is northwest. And if you take a look outside, see the runway. This is runway 3315 at the shuttle landing facility at Cape Canaveral, Kennedy Space Center. Right over there in the background is the Vehicle Assembly Building. And it's referred to as Runway 3315 for a reason. Because when you're taking off facing this direction, it's Runway 33. Because your heading is about 330 degrees. If you're at the other end, taking off this way, it's Runway 15, because then your heading is 150 degrees. Alright, back inside. Next up we have the altimeter, the altitude readout. Right now it says 2.57 and it's expressed in meters. Most of the measurements expressed in, in Orbiter are metric. And I think one of the main reasons for that is that they're easier to convert from different scale units uh, and back and forth, you know, if it was expressed in, th if this was in feet, then later on you would have to do a calculation of multiply, or divide it by 5,280 to get miles, and so on, you know, it's much easier, you've got it in meters, and once the number goes over a thousand, a K appears here to indicate that now it's talking about kilometers. And similarly over here, TAS, that's true airspeed. Right now it's zero, of course, because we're parked on the runway. It is also expressed in meters, as in meters per second. And when the number goes over a thousand, a K appears here, and it's kilometers per second. Next up in the center part of the HUD, you have what is called the pitch ladder. And this indicates basically the pitch of your aircraft or spacecraft or whatever. The long line here in the center is the horizon. This little uh, inverted V angular thing points to where your ship is pointed, the direction it's facing. And then the long line here indicates the zero pitch level with the horizon. These lines up here, these solid lines, with the uh, plus 10 and plus 20 
is plus 10 degrees of pitch, plus 20 degrees of pitch, in other words, uh, the ship pitching upward towards the sky. Now in here you've got broken lines with minus 10 and minus 20 indicating that if you're that if one of these lines is up with even with this then you are pitched down by that amount. And it's actually really very simple. Now we hit F8 again, pop inside. You see we've got a surface display here that has sort of a miniature version of the HUD painted on it. And one of the MFDs uh, an MFD stands for multifunction display. And we hit select down here, and we select the surface MFD. Again, you've got the small, smaller version of the HUD, and you've got your your speed in meters a second. You've got your altitude in kilometers. Your vertical speed in meters a second. Down here, you've got even more information. Your acceleration in meters per second squared your vertical acceleration in meters per second squared, your angle of attack, and other bits of information, your latitude and longitude of your position, the rate of change of those numbers, your uh, static pressure, your dynamic pressure, and honestly, I don't know what these two are, the OAT and M numbers. And let's see over here, your hover engine controls, pull that forward, or use the insert and delete key on the uh, keyboard. And of course, in this particular ship, when you activate that, it plays that little bit of uh, audio. If you have Orbiter sound installed, that is, because with Orbiter, sound is an add-on. Okay. And similarly, the main engine controls, forward activates them, and that's like hitting plus on the keyboard, on the uh, numeric keypad. Hit minus on the numeric keypad, and if the retro doors are open, that will activate the retro engines, which will be thrusting forward against your direction of flight, and so on. And now, the HUD, if I go back here to this view, the HUD has several different modes and uh, you can change those modes with the H key on the keyboard and this is the docking HUD which is useful when you're preparing to dock with another ship there are indicators on here that show the distance of the target that you're trying to dock with and the direction of the velocity relative to it and so on it also has an indicator that tells you whether or not your nose cone is open and which in this case with the Delta glider and also with the uh, XR2 the docking collar is the inside the nose cone area and the nose cone will have to open to expose it and then the next mode of the HUD you hit H again and this is orbit mode and again you see this uh, you recognize this here pitch ladder that indicates your attitude relative to what you're orbiting. And here you've got orbital speed. Now we do have an orbital speed because technically even though we're parked on the ground we are orbiting the center of the Earth. And uh, this indicator here switches from being an altitude indicator. Well in a way it is still. 6,371 meters from the center of the Earth. This is the radius of your distance, or your distance from the center of whatever you're orbiting. In this case, orbit mode on the HUD, and we're orbiting Earth. Okay, so pop back in here. Oops, in here. Now over here, your RCS mode controls. Where on this HUD, they're up here. On the 2D cockpit, it's over here. You right click to uh, turn it to the right and you left Rotation. click to turn it to the left Rotation. Rotation. and the same thing with the aerodynamic flight controls and that's what AF control stands for is aerodynamic flight you turn that off or on switch it to pitch or switch it to on which just has it working on all forms 
Uh, you've got your autopilot controls here for kill rotation, prograde, retrograde, orbit normal, orbit anti-normal, level horizon, which is an autopilot that keeps your ship level with the horizon. Or if your ship has hover engines, this control will maintain will use them to maintain your altitude. And then of course there's an air brake, which if you look outside, the air brake is these flaps on the wing that extend specifically for the purpose of presenting more drag to slow the ship down. And then when not in use, they're closed up like so. Alright, now that's pretty much the HUD. And there's another thing too. You can right click and drag to move the camera around. You can actually even look pretty much almost all the way behind you that way or down up or whatever and then when you're done with that you let go of it and hit the home key on the keyboard and that faces it back to where it defaults to straight in front of you. So that's pretty much most of the instrument panel right here. These number these readouts here. This one is for your angle of attack and this one is your vertical speed indicating whether you're climbing or descending. And the angle of attack is kind of related to your pitch, which is uh, the angle at which you are hitting the atmosphere in front of you. Now these MFDs, there are several of them, several multifunction displays. You've got the orbit display, which shows you important information, like for example your apoapsis, which is APA, periapsis, which is PEA, or they can also be, if you hit the DST button, they can also show as PER, which is periapsis radius, APR, which is apoapsis radius. Again, these are now made being measured as the radius from the distance from the center of what you're orbiting. Radius is your current distance from the uh, center, or hit DST, and it becomes altitude. ECC is your eccentricity. How circular is your orbit? Right now, this is not very circular because it's not an orbit. PET, the time to periapsis. APT is the time to apoapsis. And of course, velocity. VEL, velocity. INC is inclination. How tilted is your orbit compared to the equator? the equator of what you're orbiting and so on. And there's a bunch of other numbers. I don't really know what most of those other ones are to be honest with you. But that's the orbit MFD and the nice thing about that handy is you can target say for example the moon and now you get the same information for the planetary or celestial body that you target or perhaps a ship that you might target like the ISS you get all that same information here and you can use that to rendezvous and let's see there is aligned planes and this one let's go ahead and target the moon and that shows you the inclination of the target your inclination the relative inclination between them the rate of change and uh, the time to the next node, which in this case we're approaching the descending node, and it'd be 896 seconds to get to the until we get there. Of course, that would apply if we're actually in orbit. We're parked on the surface, so this number isn't really going to change, and uh, so on. But this tool is used for getting your ship changing your orbit to match the inclination or orbital plane of uh, the target, be it a ship or a moon or a planet or whatever that you're trying to rendezvous with. And there's like sync orbit, which also is useful for that. Let's see, let's target the moon again. And of course there's no intersection because our orbit doesn't intersect out of the moon. 
but it's useful for things like that for rendezvousing with ships or planets or moons I personally have used it to, to rendezvous with the International Space Station I've also used it to rendezvous with Phobos in the Earth to Mars series that I'm doing and uh, let's see ComNav lets you set up, set up your communications radios and uh, VOR VTOL this is uh, basically a direction finder radio it helps you navigate towards a base or a landing pad the VLR towards can get you to a runway the v, VTOL part of it can help you land on a landing pad and that same com nav can also set you up for the docking radio which is similar information used for docking with another ship uh, and then there's of course Transex, which is a very useful, complicated, but very powerful uh, navigational utility. And there, are, if you hit select again, in this case, okay, a default installation of Orbiter is probably just going to have the stuff right here. And then I have some more MFDs that I've downloaded and added on, so I can hit select again, get the second page of them. Things like burn time calculator, air uprake, MFD, attitude, base sync, glide slope, all of which I've used to varying degrees to help in navigation and figuring out how to get the ship where you're going. So that's pretty much most of the display. And this is, again, this is looking at the Delta Glider. And uh, also, with the Delta Glider, if you use the down arrow key on the keyboard, slide the panel up, and that shows you some more. Uh, your basic controls, like airlock ladder stowed, cabin hatch, the retro doors, whether you want to open or close the retro doors, the radiator, which on the Delta Glider, I don't believe the radiator does anything, and the controls for your lights. And these are autopilot controls, but I've never actually used them, so I have no idea what the, uh, how to work them or anything like that. And then, of course, important information here, how much fuel you have and how much RCS fuel you have, and so on. And with the Delta Glider, it counts on you having a setting turned on in Orbiter that has you automatically refuel when you land. I have that turned off because it's kind of counterproductive when you're flying a ship like the XR, any of the XR ships, and so on. And then you hit the up arrow key to slide that back down and stop it when you get to about there. And that's pretty much the uh, HUD and instrument panels in Orbiter. And now I'm going to switch to the XR2, and we'll have a look at that just for comparison. And now here we are the XR2 and as you can see we're at the other end of that same runway because there's the uh, vehicle assembly building and if this were the same scenario the Delta glider would be parked right down there facing this way it's not and it, you know this is just a default scenario that comes with the XR2 pack with the XR2 mod and uh, so, let's hit F1, jump inside, and we have what looks like a much busier instrument panel and so on, and in a way it is. There is a lot more to do and control in the XR2. Like for example, with this one, the instrument panel, you can use the up arrow key to slide it down, which I don't know why you would want to do that, but uh, to actually get a look at the lower panel, you do control down arrow and this is uh, stuff that's on the lower information the lower uh, instrument panel you've got your fuel levels interestingly enough you have your engine controls available down here as well cross feed to move fuel between the main and RCS tanks because of this ship the main fuel and RCS system the main engine and the RCS system use the same kind of fuel the scram engines use a different kind of fuel and the APU uses a different kind of fuel yet. 
APU is Auxiliary Power Unit, which it provides hydraulic pressure for systems that need it, like the aerodynamic flight controls, raising and lowering of landing gears, opening and closing of any kind of hatches or doorways and stuff like that. We have systems here for refueling and resupplying the ship. Oxygen supply, which the Delta Glider doesn't concern itself with things like oxygen supplies or coolant temperatures. With the XR2, the radiator is actually important because the system coolant will heat up over time and you need the radiator exposed in order to cool it off. Another way is to, while landed, Using external O2. turn on external cooling, external which means you're not using your own oxygen, you're using the oxygen of whatever base you're landed at or ship or whatever the space station that you're docked with. And of course there's also information about the ship, thermal limits of the hull, wing load limits, maximum dynamic pressure for various uh, components of the ship, your maximum touchdown speed for the landing gear, how long it takes for certain parts of certain components to deploy, and so on. And now let's uh, shift up arrow, or control up arrow, excuse me, to head back here. And uh, let's see, we've got a secondary HUD that has different colors and different functions. Personally, the only one of them I ever use is this one because I can read it. I can't see those others. Here you have the APU control, which turn that off, get rid of the noise because we're not using it. And again, you've got the same HUD, H to cycle through the different modes, and uh, it's showing the same information. Except for here, we'll point it out at 150 because we're on runway 15. Down here is the temperature display. It shows the temperature of various parts of the ship at uh, in degrees C. And let's see, your main RCS and scram fuel levels. Down here, this display shows you how much thrust you're getting from which engines. And uh, so on, mission elapse timer. This starts counting down when you leave when your wheels leave the ground as you launch. And uh, so on. Over here you've got your MFDs. Same as before. And then F8. Go to a mode like this where you have this sort of kind of semi-realistic I think uh, HUD type display that an actual pilot in a real craft would see. And then F8 again. And you've got the glass cockpit. Now the HUD, you can change color of the HUD using, I believe it's Alt H, and you might want to change the color of the HUD. Like for example, if you're in space and most of what you're seeing out here is black and dark, then this green HUD color is actually quite good. On the ground, you might want to use blue, well this red color, or the blue, and I could even use this yellow color on the ground or in atmospheric flight on several occasions. But you want to have the HUD color set to something that has a sufficient contrast to the environment you're in. And again, you've got this display over here on this version of the HUD with your amount of fuel, how much main engine thrust, how much hover engine thrust, your RCS mode, your elevator trim up and down here, and again, you still have your MFDs, and you've got your your basic navigational autopilots, uh, attitude control autopilots, I call them. Kill rotation, horizon level, prograde, retrograde, normal and anti-normal, and hold altitude. And so on. So, pop back in here with this, and uh, that's basically it right here. Now, with the XR2, there are occasionally... Uh, 
warning alarms that sound, and you click here system, system reset. to reset the al the alarm warning, the warning system, or you can hit system Control reset. W to turn that alarm sound off because it's kind of annoying. Anyway, that's pretty much the whole thing with the instrument panel in Orbiter 2 2010, both with the default Delta Glider and the uh, XR2. Oh, excuse me, there is more with the XR2. Do a control up arrow from this screen and you get the top panel where you've got controls for your lights, you've got your mission elapsed time, and you've got two interval timers as well. Controls for landing gear, scram doors, hover doors, retro doors, radiator, um, uh, airlock controls, the bay doors. And you click right here where it says payload camera view. And this brings you to this view that shows you the payload bay, and you can use the payload editor to set up your payload. You can open and close the payload doors or you can just use the payload editor without opening those doors in most situations. And then control down arrow, get back down here, and so on. So there is kind of a brief overview. I haven't gone into any painstaking detail about how to use all of this stuff because I think all of that would be a lot more involved and in several cases could involve an individual video per mm -hmm. item. As a matter of fact, Transex could involve several, many videos just to deal with all of what you do with Transex. But this should serve as a reasonable overview and uh, now, when watching an Orbiter 2010 video, or messing around with Orbiter 2010 yourself, you have a better idea of what is showing in the HUD. I hope this has been helpful. If you liked the video, please take one second and give it a thumbs up. And leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions or anything like that, leave them down below. I'll be glad to answer any I can and so on. So, thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'm out of here.